Hello, Math 8 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to teach Chapter 6, Lesson 2, which is about representations of functions. Please open up your spiral notebook to a nice clean page and write this as the title at the top of the page. As a reminder, a function is when each input has only one output. With almost all types of functions, you're going to have a function rule, which is an equation that describes the relationship between the inputs and the outputs. So hopefully you remember that the inputs are the set of all of the x values, and the outputs are the set of all of the y values. Another thing to know is that the inputs are the independent variable, and the outputs are the dependent variable. The reason for this is because what we get out of a function depends upon what we put into the function. So we could put any number into the function, but whatever we put in is independent, and then what we get out depends upon what we put in. So let's look at an example. If I had wrote the output is 5 less than the input, what we're going to do is we want to rewrite this as an equation. So my first step is to find the words the output. So here they are here. So I know that the output means, uh, remember output is the y values, so output means y. Then I find what where the word is belongs. So is is here, and is stands for equals sign. Then I find where the, the words input is. So the input is here, and so that is your x. Now we have to look and see what's happening to the input. So it says 5 less than, so that means we're subtracting 5 off of the input. So that means that my final answer would be y equals, now I'm subtracting 5 off, so I'm going to go x minus 5 like that. And so this would be my answer for this example. It's a common mistake that students instead want to write 5 minus x here, but you have to be careful with what it says. It says that 5 is being subtracted off even though it's written first. Here's another example. The output is the square of the input. So I want to find the words the output. The output is my y. So I'm going to write y here. I need to find the word is because that's where my equal sign is going to go. Now we need to find the words the input. So that belongs here. So that will be my x. Now we need to look and see what's happening to the input. It says the square of the input, so that means we're going to square the input, which means an exponent of 2. So that means that my final answer is y equals, I take my input and I'm squaring it, so that means x to the power of 2. And that would be my answer for this problem. So you can show a function in many, many different ways. We could represent it as an equation, like what we have done up in the previous examples. You could also see it as an input-output table. Um, you could also view it as a graph. Please pause the video to write, to draw a picture of a graph and to write the input-output table. So here I have an input-output table, um, and you'll notice that we can find the points. Now this would be 1, 3, which would be graphed. 1, 3 would be here over on the graph. Then I have 2, 4, which is graphed here. And lastly, I have 3, 5, which is graphed here. So if I wanted to continue this graph, I certainly could. I see that it's a line, so I can continue this, this graph in both directions. And when I do, I can now find the equation. And remember, the equation is found by first finding the slope and then finding the y-intercept. So the slope is going to be 
um, up one over one. All of these are up one over one, up one over one. So one over one, which is the same as one. My y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. I see that it crosses the y-axis at positive two. So I'm going to write two next to the y-intercept. Now we want to write our equation. So remember it's y equals something x plus something, where the first something is the slope and the second something is the y-intercept. So then that would be y equals 1x plus my y-intercept, which is 2. So here we have a function shown in three different ways. We have an input-output table, we have a graph, and we have an equation. I have two more examples for you before we move into some examples from the RPJ. These will help you with your homework that's in Big Ideas Math. So I would like for you to please pause the video and write down these two examples along with a couple of graphs for, uh, for graphing these equations. So you'll notice that first what we have is these, both of these equations are not in the form that we're used to seeing. So we're used to seeing y equals something x plus something, where the first something is the slope that's usually written as a fraction, and the second something is the y-intercept. So that means what we need to do is we need to rearrange these problems so that they look like what we're used to seeing. So the first thing I notice is that the 0.5x, the x part, is in the wrong place. Usually we write that first. So that's going to be what I do first. I'm just going to rewrite this as y equals, and all I'm going to do is, is uh, move these around from each other, so, or flip them around. So 0.5x is going to come first, and then I still have a minus 2, so that's going to be minus 2. Okay, it's looking a little bit better now. The only thing that I notice now is that this is not written as a fraction. So I'm going to rewrite the 0.5 as a fraction. So let's think about that for a minute. 5, 0.5 is the same as 5 tenths, which is the same as 1 half. So if I were to rewrite this, we would get y equals 1 half x minus 2. Now it's written as something that I'm used to seeing. So what I'm going to do now is find my y-intercept. My y-intercept is negative 2, so I will plot that on my graph down below. Now I'm going to count my slope. My slope is up 1 over 2 in the positive direction. So we go up 1 over 2 and we put a point, and then we're going to continue with this pattern. And after you finish writing a few points, you're going to connect them in a line. And there's my equation. All right, let's take a look at the second one here. Again, this is not written like we're used to seeing. So one thing to note is whenever you see x over 5 like that, you can think about it as an invisible 1 in front of the x. So actually, we can write the, rewrite this as x equals... 1 over 5, and you can pull the x out from the fraction and put it right after. So now it's written as something that we're used to seeing. There is no y-intercept on there, so remember what that means is that that means my y-intercept would be 0. So we're going to start at the origin, and we're going to count our slope. Our slope is up 1 over 5, and we're going to put a point and continue with this pattern a few more times. There we go. And as soon as you have several points showing that you know that that's the equation or the, that is the line, you can draw your line. Please open your RPJs and turn to page 128. So on numbers 1 and 2, you need to write the function rule for the statement that's written in words. I already did a few problems like this for you in the notes uh, in your spiral notebook. So I will help you get started, and then I'm going to have you finish both of these. So we need to find the words, the output. So the output is your y. Now we need to find the word is. The is, remember, is your equal sign. Now we need to find the words, the input. So the input is what your x is. And now we need to figure out what it's saying. So it's telling us that the, it needs to be, that the input needs to be multiplied four times. 
So go ahead and finish number one and do number two as well. Number two is very, very similar to a problem that I did in your notes already. Okay, so you need to check your answers. For number one, I got y equals four times x, or just four x. Number two is y equals x minus eight. Remember, this is not eight minus x because eight is being subtracted off of the input, so it has to go after it like that. Let's take a look at numbers three and four. So number three and four, it just says, find the value of y for the given value of x. So here we're given an equation of a function, and what we need to do is we need to take the value that they're given, so this is my independent variable, we're going to substitute it in for the x. So that means that we're going to rewrite the problem, but instead of x on the top, we're going to substitute in what x is. So they want us to write x as 12. Simplify this. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. So that is our answer for number 3. We're going to do the same thing for number 4. We're going to take what x is. They want x to be 2. Now x could be anything, right? But in this case they want x to be 2. We're going to substitute it in for the x on the equation. So I'm going to rewrite the equation, but instead of x I'm going to put parentheses and we're going to substitute what x is. We, they want x to be 2. Now they, need that, now they want us just to finish the problem. I would like for you to simplify this and see if you can find the answer. Okay, I got that y equals 19. If you did not get y equals 19, see if you can find your mistake. Let's take a look at this last problem. You set up a hot chocolate stand at a football game. The cost of your supplies is $75, so that's how much you spent on the hot chocolate and maybe on the milk and on the cups, okay? And you are charging 50 cents for each cup of hot chocolate. So first they would like us to write a function that represents the profit P for selling C cups of hot chocolate. What I like to do in these kind of problems before I write my answer is I write it in words. I want to explain what's going on in words. So we have, we, we spent $75 and we're going to, and so this is how much money that is already gone, right, that we had to take out. So then we're going to add to that 50 cents per cup that we sell. So what does that mean? So if we have already spent it, that means that we're less $75. So we don't have $75. We had to borrow that or take it out of our uh, savings account. So it's negative. Now we're gonna add to that 50 cents per cup. So I'm just gonna go 0 0.50, and they want the cups to be a C. See, they want C to be cups, okay? And they want the P to be profit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take P and equal it to that, and that is my answer for the function. So let's see if we can understand this again. The profit is going to equal, so that means how much money we're going to make. We have to first make up this amount, the $75, and then we're going to start selling hot chocolate at 50 cents per cup. So it says you're going to break even when the cost of your supplies equals your income. So when we make up this amount, for when we sell our hot chocolate, we're going to be able to be at the break-even point. So the question is, how many cups of hot chocolate do you need to sell in order to break even? So in other words, we have $75 that we've spent, and we need to figure out how many cups of hot chocolate we've got to sell. So if we divide out the 50 cents per cup, and solve for that, then we'll be able to find our answer. So 75 divided by 0.5, I'm just gonna write it this way. 
because let's talk about this for a minute. So 0.5 is the same as half of a dollar. So I'm going to change this to a fraction because fractions are a lot easier to work with than decimals. So I'm going to change it to a fraction. Now, if you remember, uh, keep change flip, we're going to do that here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to keep my 75. I'm going to change it to a multiplier and I'm going to flip the fraction. So it's two over one, which is the same as two. 75 times two is 150. So that means that we need to sell 150 cups of hot chocolate in order to get to the break-even point. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.